Welcome to Dakota Starry Nights. Fellas, for about, oh, about three and a half months, I've been working on this AM5, trying to do a review for y'all. That three and a half months went by pretty quick. But, you know, the old saying is, time flies when you're having fun. Well, I've had a lot of fun with this mount. And at this point, I can recommend it. Now, for you guys that want to just, you know, jump on and you've already looked into this and you just want a, a recommendation, I could give you that recommendation. There are two caveats, though, that I want to point out. And one, if you're thinking of this for visual work, which is what I bought it for, as of this post, they don't have a good all-star polar alignment program. However, you can get a guide cam with a guide scope and put it on there and plate solve your way around the sky. And it's really awesome. It puts those targets dead center each and every time without question. You just need to sync your guide scope to your eyepiece. Once you do that, you're golden. And what I like about that actually is that you don't have to do a star alignment and you don't have to add stars throughout the night. It just nails it time after time after time. And that's if you're doing equatorial or whether you're doing alt as. So that's the one caveat. Now, the other one is that to unlock the full potential of the AM5, you're pretty much going to need an ASI Air in order to access some of the great features that it has to offer. You're able to do live stacking, planetary, you could dark subtract, bias subtract, flap subtract, all on the fly. And also uh, data acquisition, you know, getting on your targets because it will plate solve its way around the sky. Between that and the cost of a tripod, unless you already have one, it's gonna bump the price up to $2,400, $2,500 depending. And of course, it's super light. All it requires is this little counterweight. It's almost ridiculous. And it's great. So let's get into the AM5 a little deeper and we'll cover some more of the finer details and some interesting approaches to doing night vision with the AM5. See you in a bit. This is a strain wave Zwo AM5 mount. And it's uh, rated at 40 something pound capacity uh, with the counterweight and 20 something without it. I wanna say you pretty much wanna put a weight on this thing if it's 20 pounds. And you wanna find some kind of way of balancing it prior to putting your rig on. They say it doesn't require balance. If you have it balanced, you're just gonna get that much more life out of the system. It's just plain physics. So if you have an equatorial mount, uh, balance it on your equatorial mount and then mark it where it's on the saddle, where that center part is, and then just go ahead and put it on your AM5. If you don't, what you could do is you could take your rig on a bench, put it on a bench and get like a dowel, okay, and then load it up, get a dowel, and put that dowel on that dovetail, and then roll it back and forth. If this was the dowel like this, the rig is gonna go this way, we're going to roll it back and forth until we find some kind of equilibrium there and then mark it. Now, it don't have to be perfect, perfect. This mount is in the Alt-As configuration. It's the reason why I bought it. So this review really is going to be, how does this work for visual, okay? There's plenty out there that talk about, you know, the different astrophotography aspects of it. And that's great. What I have here is an Orion 8-inch Fast Newt F4, okay? And up here, I have a PVS-14 night vision monocular, okay, with a 55-millimeter plossel with that new reducer that Teleview, uh, Uncle Al, came out with that you put in top of this plossel, and it makes this like 67? Crazy. It's great. So you really bring your F down when you start doing the math. If you want to know more about night vision, check out here on Dakota Starry Nights, an introduction to night vision astronomy. I cover the whole thing. As a matter of fact, that was filmed right here at the Hidden Valley Observatory, which is where I am right now. What I found so far with this for visual work, and here's the downside. Right now, Zwo does not have a reliable alignment program. Now, Zwo is updating the firmware they claim and they've tried a couple of iterations on making the star alignment work better and so far it's spotty. I think after a while they'll probably figure it out but right now they don't have it figured out. So that's something you want to keep in mind fellas is that 
out of the box, this is not ready to do a go-to. However, there is a solution, and this is the code of Starry Nights, and that's what we're about. What you see here is a 60 millimeter Samboni guide scope, and I have an ASI 174 Zwo. On the back end, I have a ASI Air Mini. Let me take you over here and check it out. Okay, so right here is the Mini, and I've got it on a Vixen dovetail bar that's mounted on the top. This was came with the scope. And then up here is where I have that Zwo ASI 174. And this is a really good guide scope, guys, by the way. This is a Samboni 60 millimeter guide, uh, pretty reasonably priced, and it has a nice helix focuser, and you can come to focus without any fancy reducers or adapters. So... That is how we get around the sky. We plate solve. Okay, now there's an app with the ASI Air, and basically if you're familiar with the ASI Air, it works the same way. I have this on guide scope rings, okay, and this was set up to where the center of the field of view here is in the center of the field of view of your eyepiece. And once you've set that up like that, it's just like dead on each time you're just nailing it because you're plate solving. So you go to the app and you plate solve. Now I've used Sky Safari with this and it doesn't get it dead on because there's just something going on. However, it connects very quickly. So it seems like right now you're pretty much locked into the ASI Air and the program that it comes with in order to plate solve your way around the sky if you are doing visual work. Basically, all you need to do is level it up and point it roughly north, and that's it, because you're gonna plate solve. So it's gonna make its corrections as needed for each and every target. Works pretty good, it's pretty quick, but it does mean, and I got the Mini, like I said, the Mini I believe is what, 200 bucks? And that's all you really need. You don't need the, the Pro, just the Mini's fine means you're going to have to add another $200 to the price of that AM5, and then hopefully you have some kind of planetary cam, then you just put it in the back of your guide scope. Okay, so for you guys that do night vision, uh, you're going to love this. If you're doing 55 plus, there's enough uh, back focus requirement that you can use a star diagonal. Yeah, a star diagonal on a newt. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> and what's cool about it is, is that it reduces the height of that eyepiece rather than have it, you know, like normally it'd be like what? About like that. So this is really cool, but it has to be the 55. I tried the 35 panoptic. It won't do it. You're out too much. You need to come in more. But with the new eyepiece insert that you put here on the top that Uncle Al's got out there because of that now you need that extra amount of back focus you could take it up with a nice two inch star diagonal I love it and then because this is off as you're very very comfortable so that means the mount is up like that you could easily adjust this by breaking the star diagonal see and then put it on an angle to make it to where it goes real comfortable into your eyeball and then all you got to do is just step up to it and peek in. It's really going to help you bring that stack way down. So when this goes into the park position, what this does to find home, it'll go like this vertical and then it will kind of tilt a little bit more, find its home position and then go like this and go horizontal and face north and now you can shut it down and that calibrates it back to a home position. Here you have a power source that's at least 3 amps, 12 volt DC, 3 amps. Now, it says that when it slews, it uses about an amp and a half or something like that. Yeah, well, uh, under ideal conditions, but you don't want to starve that motor. So I recommend you have a power source that has at least 3 amps and preferably 5. If you're doing planetary or solar, you don't need the ASI Air because, you know, you put your red dot on the target and that's it, right? And you're going to be there and use it that way. So I don't hook up the air for that. One of the shining features of this mount is that it is super light. It is really, really light. You can hardly beat this for a grab and go. 
All right, well, that's going to do it for this workshop. Uh, until next time, guys, thanks for tuning in to the channel. If you found the information useful, then consider subscribing because uh, we're always posting new information here for you all to make life a little bit more enjoyable and fun out there at night. Clear skies, and hey, you all stay safe.